Hi, beloved. I am excited. Okay, maybe I'm not excited. But I am feeling really good about our Practical Spirituality series, which is going to be happening throughout September and October. And I, I, you know, here's why I'm not excited. And you may not be excited. But what I know and what is clear across the globe is that every area of our lives has been disrupted in some way over this past year and a half and continue to be so. It's been like this ongoing disruption, um, making it difficult to make decisions, making it difficult to feel like we can trust what is and what isn't and what matters and what's important and how we're going to um, deal with our finances and how we're going to deal with our relationships and maybe our relationships are, are, are no longer and we've had losses and we've lost beloveds and we've lost jobs and we've lost homes and um, we've lost our, our, our sense of our health has changed. Every area, our mental health has been disrupted and challenged in all kinds of new ways. And so I'm not excited about that. But what I know for sure is a lived spirituality, spiritual living, has every solution, has every answer we need in all the areas of our lives. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in September and October. We're going to go deep in vocation and finances and physical health and mental health and well-being. We're going to go deep in all of the spiritual the spiritual tools, the actual practices and tools that can help in all of these things. In our relationships, whether we are in relationship with a romantic partner or partners, whether we are not, whether we are seeking romantic relationships or not, whether we are looking for a deeper relationship with self, with community, better relationships in our families as parents, all of these things right now, I believe, are stirring in us. And I am happy to be able to support you. I am happy to be able to bring other ministers, Reverend Kamatara Johnson, Reverend Yvette Trujillo, Reverend Rebecca Allen, um, to the table with all of their skills and know-how. We are going to be able to support you in accredited education classes with like actual techniques. Um, Maddie Suarez, who is a licensed practitioner community, is going to be teaching spiritual economics with me. So for those of you who are struggling and looking for ways to either grow your experience of prosperity or to just get into a less anxious relationship with it, Join me for Spiritual Economics and Maddie. Reverend Rebecca Allen and Reverend Kamatara Johnson are going to be teaching a couple of classes on practical tools to apply these principles, on how to change your thinking so that your life can change. We're going to be starting spirit groups around all kinds of things, relationships and health and wellness and practical spirituality and ways to be with grief, all of these opportunities over the next couple of months to really bring these principles to life, to your life. I'm grateful, so grateful that we have these tools, that we have each other to do this work together in community, supported, in love, in fun, remembering not to take ourselves too seriously, not to take all the stuff out here too seriously and to put all of these ideas in motion in our lives so that we can each live our best life and so that life itself can be showing up better and better for everyone. I love you so much. Hello, and thank you so much for watching today. I am so grateful for your presence. One way that you can support this work, reaching those around the world, is to text to give. It's an easy way to contribute and be a part of this mission of transforming lives. Thank you. Be like water, my friend. You shall find a way around.
inside the shame we're in. beloved. Guess who is with me today? I'd like to introduce you if you haven't already met our newest minister, Reverend Kama Tara Johnson, soon to be licensed, and joining our team whose heart is really for ending poverty and um, whose main gig is Circles USA and has been an incredible resource to us as we begin the Circles ABQ program and alleviating, alleviating poverty right here in Albuquerque. But she is a whiz at all things, Centers for Spiritual Living, practical spirituality, which is why she is with me today. And that is what we're gonna be talking about because we are beginning the practical spirituality series, which will be taking us through September and October so that we can begin to take these giant principles and ideas and actually bring them to life through spiritual living, which is what we're all doing here. So welcome. Thanks, Reverend Amai. <laughs> and I have to say, practical spirituality is one of my absolute favorite topics, one of the reasons that I love science of mind. So I'm really excited to explore this topic with you today. Yay, yay, yay. So one of the questions I know some of you have asked me, um, and I know are just, it's out there right now, is in a time like this where every area of our life has been disrupted in some way, what does spirituality have to do with it? How can it help? How does it make a difference? What do you use in your own life, Kamatara, to get through you know, a global pandemic, to get through sheltering in place, to get through all the changes and losses and uncertainties. Yeah, things have been totally wild. I joke around that I felt like a pig on roller skates. <laughs> and that the only thing that's really helped me through these really rough and turbulent times, it is my spiritual practice and that the spiritual practice feels like home base mm. or it feels like the reality check is that you know is this real is this not real is this important is th maybe mm. this doesn't matter how might i respond to this in a way that's effective what might make the situation worse who am i being in this moment like all the things that we do in centers for spiritual living has helped me in the day in day out so having my daily meditation, my journaling practice, my prayer partners. I always have a spiritual book that I'm reading on the side where spirit is always kind of slapping me around <laughs> and saying, you need to learn this, sister, here you go. So it almost puts up the, the, the bumpers, you know, when you're little and you go bowling and it's really, really hard, so they put up the bumpers. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I so like for that. me, the spiritual practice puts up the bumpers so I may not get a strike every time, but at least I'm not going to get a gutter ball. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be, you know, uh, in, I'll be in the lane as, as best as I can be. So using spiritual practice as a home base to be grounded and centered and to give forth my best and highest good that I have in, in what perhaps could be a difficult moment, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a best case scenario so that that home base is essential for me to get through hard times yeah yeah you know it's funny i um will have an opportunity to share a conversation with y'all again later this year with reverend masando but he said something to me in a conversation we had last september about it it is spiritual practice in this moment in time over this last year and a half is keeping him from being institutionalized. Like, that's, right. it is the thing that is making all the difference. And you know, what I know, and I think probably what is, you know and want, is I want you, I want everyone who can hear me, can see me, can hear this video, to know that they have that, that they've mm -hmm. got 
bumpers, that there is something to go to, to reach for that will carry you in this time. And that there are resources, there are skills, there are tools. And like I, I say in Science of Mind, when we do foundations type classes, that science of mind doesn't just have any ordinary tools. We have power tools. We don't just power have our tools. Yes. We've got the power washer. <laughs> you know, so we we have things that can help us, like, you know, affirmations, spiritual mind treatments, calling a practitioner, the classes that we offer on practical living, some of the workshops, the connection. We we have that in place ahead of time when things are, you know, maybe things are stable or I'm not totally in crisis. Losing like, my mind. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so if I can do that when things are somewhat on an even keel, then when that storm does come and the ship is flipped and whatever, okay, the, the structure is in place or my support system is in place or oh, I know what to do in this moment and I can shorten the turnaround time of what feels like crisis and then have a skillful response. So. Yeah having the tools and the practices in place and the mindset ready and malleable, like I'm open to grace in this moment, I'm open yeah. to guidance in yeah. this moment, moment, I'm open to getting support in this moment. I yeah. can recognize the signs and then I can reach out and get what I need, whatever that looks like. But I have it in place before I am losing your yes. marbles. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I think you said something in, in the notes that you and I are putting together about um, like spiritual stamina, yeah. like having a daily practice. Yeah. What it, has that been like for you? For me, it increases my stamina to endure potentially difficult situations it also helps me to go beyond the surface. Like, I don't want to just jet ski mm. through this event or this moment that's happening. If something needs to go into that deep dive or I need to be open to spirit's guidance or something that's deeper, then this, the spiritual practice kind of strengthens my muscles that, mm -hmm. oh, I've played in that land before. or. I have the words to articulate it because I, I read this book and I remember this phrase from Mickey Singer and Untethered Soul or <laughs> whatever it is. Like I, I'm adding tools to my toolkit and I'm adding words to articulate and perspective to deepen. Mm. So that way I do have some spiritual muscles or some stamina to walk through and not just shut down or collapse or do more mm. damage. I don't ever want to do that. So mm. I, I really appreciate being fed on the inside so I can externally manifest what might be internally grounded mm -hmm. oh, I when, love that. when possible. <laughs> I love that because, you know, that's one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is in this time, like when things feel like the crisis is on going right like the 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 delta variant now we got numbers rising again running a marathon oh my goodness right it's like this ongoing disruption in all areas of our lives and so we we tend to reach for what works yeah right and Default when things pattern yeah and like you said we shut down and I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes that looks like addiction. Sometimes that looks like substances. Sometimes that looks like you know, binge watching. Yeah. You know, no, whole numbing. series. I was numbing. just thinking about numbing <laughs> or withdrawing. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot that I want to be able to offer you is, I want people to know, like you said, to have the stamina, to have the habit. Mm -hmm. the habit of spiritual practice so in their bones that that's what we reach for. It becomes a natural response instead of having to engineer it to come out. It just is. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the hard things go away or that everything is sunshine, roses, and lollipops, but at least when you know things are a little rough, there is something to draw forth. It's not just <laughs> grasping at straws. <laughs> yeah. 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 And to do so mindfully. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, you know, I'll tell you what, I am going to binge watch a thing. Oh, like yeah. that's good. You know, that's going to happen. Yeah. But I, I choose it. 
I choose it. You know, I say to my sweetheart, often, you know, on long work days especially, yeah. I'll, you know, I will come to the couch and I'll be like, I need to unsquish my brain now. Yeah. <laughs> and, Absolutely. and sometimes that looks like Netflix, right? Sometimes yeah. that looks like, you know, ice cream in a movie. Um, and sometimes it looks like I need to sit in meditation longer than I did yesterday. Um, and, and whatever that looks like, but we get to, to reach for those supports, those tools, um, those methods consciously. And to know we're not alone. Oh man. To know. Yes. So even just reaching for the Ram Das video on Gaia or the book that <laughs> feeds my soul yes. helps me know I'm not yes. alone or calling up my best friend Yvette and saying, I need some perspective on yeah. this yeah. or texting a practitioner and saying, do you have a moment? I'm really lost right now. Just to know I'm not alone the, between the, the practice and the people, mm. I, I, I am supported. Yeah, the practice and the people. You know, when I think about what spiritual living means to me, about what practical spiritual spirituality is or applied spirituality, right. Um, that's exactly it. It's the practices and it's the people. And um, I was listening to something, a podcast recently, and it was talking about, um, you know, the Hindu version of um, Sangha, you know, yeah. of, you know, coming in, yeah. also in Buddhism. But the, the idea that, you know, we have intentional community. Yeah. And I was thinking about, like, what's different about spiritual community and why do we need it? Right, because many of us, especially in this country, in this culture, um, we practice privately. Our spirituality is private, you know? We don't often, especially those of us who are attracted to Centers for Spiritual Living, who, you know, are spiritual but not religious, um, you know, spiritual community, like, what's the, wh why, what's the benefit? Huh? Here's my <laughs> list. Okay, you hit one of my, my soapbox issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love spiritual community because it helps me have a deep sense of meaning and belonging, that we are heart connected to each other, that we are sharing the journey and having empathy for each other. Mm. Oh, sister, I have been there. Mm. Or, you know, let's just talk through this or having the support to share the journey is huge. You know, if I were running a marathon, I wouldn't be able to run it without the people who hand out the water cups or the people <laughs> who have marked the trail or the yeah. people who do. There's, yeah. there's a whole bunch of things that happen to get someone through the race. I yeah. know and I can't do it in front of you, right? Like, yes. I, I find a lot of inspiration and support from knowing someone is further ahead than I am. Yes. And then I can be like, so how did you get there? You know, shared and wisdom, some accountability. Like I have <laughs> prayer partners in my life where their sole role is to call me on my shit. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> accountability. Or I made a promise I was going to work on this thing, and then I can't see that I'm doing that thing. And then you know, my precious friend will say, "Oh, my love, uh, I think." <laughs> You know, as Brene Brown calls them gremlins, I think your gremlin is showing right now. <laughs> oh, oh, you're right. That is my gremlin talking or mm -hmm. whatever it is mm -hmm. to, to have the mirror, the perspective put up. So the spiritual community helps me go further, faster, mm. deeper, wider mm -hmm. than I could possibly do by myself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I think it's critical. I think it's, yeah. it's one of the tools that for a long time I didn't know I needed, mm -hmm. um, but has made all the difference in my own journey. And it is, um, it is right up there with a daily practice. Oh yeah. You know, with study. Um, and, and so one of the other things I've been thinking about a lot is this idea, you, you spoke to it a bit of, um, we can skim the surface of things and that really the call of spiritual living is to go beyond that, yeah. is to be willing to be changed and not changed from some lesser broken version of ourselves mm -hmm. to a better, shinier version, <laughs> <laughs> but to be opened up to more of who we are. Yeah. Divine revelation yeah. of our true self, like capital S self, yes. the wholeness that's actually there yeah, because, you know, 
all the areas of our life that for most of us, and maybe not all of you, but for most of us, are disrupted in some way, right? Like our schedules have changed, our kids were doing school at home and now they're going to school in masks, and, you know, and, and some of us have lost jobs or our living situations, or some of us are now um, supporting family members who's left. You know, like so much has changed. You know, marriages have been tested um, as we've all been <laughs> yeah, <laughs> home. Yeah, absolutely. So much, and so like our relationships have been disrupted. Our finances have been disrupted. For some of us, our vocation and purpose has been disrupted because we got enough stillness and quiet to realize we hated our jobs or we could no longer do X, Y, or Z. And, and our health, our health, we've been sitting on our asses. And actually, you know, maybe not all of us have been sitting on our asses, but you know, the COVID-10 or the COVID-15 oh, yeah. as it's become known. So there's all of this stuff. Mm. And what I want you to know is that for every single one of those areas, yeah. our spiritual living has an answer. Yes. Don't you think? That's one of the things that attracts me to science of mine, that Dr. Ernest Holmes was known as a practical mystic. And I know that being mystical is kind of sexy and glamorous and like, so ooh, sexy. I want to go there. It's all sparkly in the unity yes, of experience. Yes, I want my mind to explode. Ooh, I came down from the mountaintop. And that's important. And I'm not trying to poo-poo those experiences because they're really important. But for the day in, day out, could we, could we balance and have, like Dr. Ernest Holmes had, the practical mysticism? Like, how do we apply these principles that we believe and, and what we know to be true into the day in, day out of life so that way it could be more skillful, it could be deeper or richer or more meaningful or when there is one of those pivot moments that could be really skillful and blessed by grace or it could be an outrageously epic display of unskillful living. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's a pivot moment. Right. And so with practical mysticism or spiritual practice, I could be open to being that portal of grace as opposed to just face planting yeah. in that moment. And even with spiritual practice, I still face plant oftentimes. Amen, me too. Absolutely. But then, but, like they say in Aikido, fall down nine times, get up ten. I... I can get myself back up because I have spiritual practice. I have a spiritual community. And you have stamina. And I have stamina. I can, I can get back up. So I really want to see how does this apply to my health, my finances, my relationships, my livelihood, you know, my understanding of myself and my place in the universe. It all applies. Yeah. And we can go there together. And you might know something I've... I don't know, or you might say something in a way I've never heard it before, and it resonates, and it opens up a whole new vein of, of gold <laughs> inside of the cavern of myself. So when we do spiritual practice together, we all learn and grow. It's yeah. like the bounty of the shared knowledge. Yeah. It's so rich. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love um, being a part of this particular community mm -hmm. is because the practices are infinite. You know, so I learn new practices listening to like, oh, what's the mantra you do? Or, oh, wow, you're doing this new photo thing and walking and like you're tree bathing. Like I hear all the time all of these different practices. And that's one of the reasons why I love being in a community like this, you know, this center. Um, that is so wide open, right? You and know, sharing the wide gifts. open yeah. and sharing, um, and that we we are not. There are no requirements, right? It might be a Hindu mantra for you this week, and it's a you know gardening meditation for me, and it all counts, right? You know, it all counts, and I love that. Um, one of the other pieces I really wanted to talk about with you, especially is you have a tricky job. And, you know, Kamatara uh, works with training circles chapters. So she's teaching people how to put together intentional community to alleviate mm -hmm. poverty. And so you are running into um, crisis probably pretty regularly. 
but mostly either resistance to big concepts that people may feel uncomfortable with, like, well, we definitely want to get people out of poverty, but we don't want to talk about race. Or we definitely want people to get themselves out of poverty, but we can't talk about politics or government. So there's, there's places where people have drawn false boundaries, mm. and it limits the full response of what could happen in this moment. And I think a lot of us, myself included, I do that in my own life. Like, I can go this far, but not that far. Mm. So Circle sometimes challenges the limited beliefs or perspectives. Mm. And if people are, are willing to, to go a little bit deeper, stretch a little bit beyond that comfort zone, could we be open to this possibility? Then, then that's where the magic happens, like mm. just outside the comfort zone. And then and the other thing that happens with circles, in, in my experience in working with people across the United States and Canada, is that a lot of the community leaders who are bringing this to their area, oftentimes they, they want to do this, but they don't recognize their own power to do it. Ah. There is a lot of fear or little old me, I couldn't possibly do this. So we work a lot on transformative leadership and owning our power I and love that. knowing that, you know, this this is good and we can do this and it is possible to end poverty as we know it right here in this community. Or I can talk to that policymaker or I can, you know, inspire a, a bevy of volunteers to come do this work with me to like to own our own power and again spiritual Which is, practice helps right us. it's that is our divine nature right god to is powerful is making us powerful so i want to share with y'all this quote that um reverend kamatar shared with me there are many people trying to live in a safety zone by staying the same however staying the same and trying to save your little life is stagnation you're here to embrace the progressive nature of the cosmos, which is always expanding. Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. Mm. I love that concept of stepping out of stagnation. Because you know the definition of insanity, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll just get what you've always gotten. And a lot of times that's our default response. And even though I know it's not the best response, I still might do it anyway, because mm -hmm. at least I know what's gonna happen as opposed to the whole Brene Brown of daring greatly and stepping into the arena, and I may get my butt kicked, but I need to try this because it's of integrity and I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna take risks, and that's where we grow. So for me, the spiritual practice pushes the boundaries of what I can handle doing, and I do take risks, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and I'm okay either way. Yeah. You know, and what I like to remind people of, who, especially folks who are involved in this community or take classes with me, um, who even watch our online offerings, when you click that button to turn this video on, when you registered for the class, when you showed up for an in-person gathering, when you decided to join a spirit group, you said yes to transformation. Mm -hmm. yes. And for me, that's the critical yes, is a willingness to grow, a willingness to stretch beyond our comfort zones and, and to grow into more of who we are. And you know, and as Michael Beckwith said, and I don't know when he said this, but I feel like the entirety of life itself has had the rug pulled out. Oh yeah. And I believe it's on purpose. Oh, yeah. We are not being invited to stay the same. We are not being invited to stagnate. Well, this is a historic <laughs> moment. To go all Barbara Marks Hubbard on you, mm -hmm. we are witnessing the evolution of evolution itself right now because we are shifting from unconscious evolution that happens by chance, which we have seen for millennia, into conscious evolution that happens by choice. choice. So the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Are you ready to go deeper? Are you ready to actually live spiritually greater than you have before? And, and to get support. And to do it in community. Yeah. In a community that has all yeah. said yes. 
to growing and stretching and transforming individually and collectively. Um, and so one of the ways you can go deeper if you are uh, willing to say that yes right now is to join Kamatara and uh, Reverend Rebecca in a five or ten week, you get to choose. They're going to do two five week classes. Can you remind me of the names? Sure. One is Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, which is the first set of five weeks. And the second one is Spiritual Principles and Practices. So you could do all ten weeks, which would be ideal. But we also understand people's schedules are a little bit crazy. So you could pick one or the other. And we're really excited to just reconnect with home base. They're foundations type classes, but I'm sure y'all know for some of you who have taken, let's say, Beyond Limits, or if you've taken foundations more than once, you know that each time you take it, you're a different person when you do take it. So the things that you need will come forth and the people in the class bond with each other. So the relationships that you need yes. will come forth. Yes. So that way you are not alone on the journey and you are going to have amazing takeaways for your own life, that practical spirituality. Yeah. And so your opportunity to work with Kamatara and Reverend Rebecca, who you'll get to meet soon, um, that is online on Zoom. So you can participate either way. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that the choice isn't to suffer. The choice isn't to... Um, keep doing what you're doing. The choice is really to go on the greatest treasure hunt you could ever go on, which is discover more and more your true nature and have the opportunity to live that nature in intentional community with guides, with support. I can't think of a better um, moment to say that greater yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Love you so much. Thank you, Kamatara. Thank you, Reverend Amani. I appreciate the opportunity to play. <laughs>